Hello everyone, Tina here. I hope your day is going fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, today we are going to create a project. This is a stamp set from a new collection called Whimsical and Wild. It's by James Davenport. It's over at the Spellbinder shop. And I thought this was so fun. It's called, the stamp set that I'm using is called Fairy Tale Fox. And so we're going to make a fun, playful card today. Jane Davenport's images are very free flowing. And so I thought we would um, do some watercoloring today. We are going to stamp, start off by stamping our little girl here. We're going to stamp her on some Fun Stamper's Journey um, color splash sheets. These are already trimmed down to A2 size panels and they are 140 pound um, cold press watercolor sheets. They work great. Um, I'm going to ink up my image with my Fun Stamper's Journey uh, Black Licorice ink. This ink is so nice when you watercolor, you don't have to do, well, if you want a heat emboss to keep the colors contained in like a well, you can. But I thought we would skip the heat embossing and just um, color in with the black ink here. Um, this ink doesn't smear and it doesn't smudge. Super nice for watercoloring, guys. So this is our image. She is so pretty. I'm going to just set my Misty aside and then we're going to bring in our um, coloring medium. I'm going to be using, I haven't used these in a long time. This set here, are these are called um, color sticks and they're from Jane Davenport. Since we're using a Jane Davenport stamp, I thought I'd break out my color sticks. I haven't used them in a very long time and I forgot how much I love them. The colors in the set are super bright. I have four of them here. Um, the pink here is called Make a Move. Um, the orangish color is called um, Canoodle. <laughs> Fun, playful names. They're like lipstick tubes, and they this color spread out very, very easily um, with a water brush or just a paintbrush and water. You could spread it out also. Um, there's several techniques that you can use to color in your image. Um, you can go brush to tip on your crayon there and that works great. Um, I found that I needed a little bit more of an intense color so I'm, you can go from crayon to paper if you wanted to and then you can add color to um, your crayon just scribble on an acrylic block and pick up the, the ink that way. So I did a little bit of everything for my my colors today. Um, right now I'm using the canoodle color. I also have the the darker yellow that's called Brassy Locks, and then the lighter yellow is called Bright Future. So four colors and bright shades, and I wanted to create a gradient on this little girl's um, dress. My idea, I've got to zoom in for you guys, but I, my idea is to kind of have her, the colors of her dress um, overflowing into my background. So that's what we're doing. We're kind of going to create a gradient with all three colors just kind of blending them as I go and then um, and, uh, and then I'm liking it. Sometimes I'll add the crayon directly to my watercolor cardstock for a more intense color. And then um, one thing I did notice about the set that I have, I have the uh, Soul Window color stick set. I think there's a couple sets that Jane Devaport has um, with the color sticks. And I think she just might have a skin tone color um, color stick set. Um, I don't have that one. All I have are bright colors. But I'm pretty good at mixing colors, so I think we can create a skin tone with the colors that we have. So we'll see. <laughs> For the body of her dress, I chose my pink, my make a move, make a mauve. Adding a little bit more orangey here, a little more yellow, and spreading it out. And I went outside the lines, and I'm. Um, forever trying to clean that up. <laughs> but I think that looks great. I'm going to bring in an acrylic block and then we're going to do a little bit of blending on the colors. I'm going to grab my package here. I'm going to add a little bit of my brassy locks and then we're going to add a little darker blue. The darker blue that I'm using is called Deep Truth and I'm going to use a red and the red is called um, Heart Eyes just going to mix those together and I added a little too much blue. You can see that the color is a little bit more on the greeny side. So I'm going to add a little more red to tone it down and I think this is a great dark, well not a, a maybe a dark taupe color um, after we add the yellow. <laughs> I think this is a great color for her hair and so I'm just going to pick it up with my brush and add it to her hair and then after we have her hair colored in, that brownish color, I'm going to 
blend the rest of that yellow in, and I think this is going to create a good skin tone. I'm going to do a little swatch here on the side, and I think that's a nice color for her skin. So I'm just going to pick that up and add that to her face, and then add it to her arms and her legs. And I, I think she's so pretty and so easy to color in. And this color, this leg got a, is really tan, <laughs> so I'm just dabbing off the excess, kind of toning it down a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of my pink to what I have down on my block, and then we're going to mix a little bit of that um, color together with the pink, and then we're going to rosy up her cheeks. And I'm still trying to clean up that area where I went outside the line. <laughs> Okay, so this is our little girl. I think she looks beautiful. I'm gonna keep the colors out because we're gonna create a background. Just put the lids back on there. Um, yeah, they just roll up like a lipstick. If you if you need to push it up, you can. Um, that's the great thing about these, but I, I think a little goes a long way. It'll last you forever, I'm pretty sure. I realized that I didn't do her left arm, and so I'm trying to pick up some color from um, her other arms and legs to fill in um, her left arm. And I think I, I had enough color left over on my brush to do that. So she's good to go. Okay, now we're gonna work on our background. We're gonna create the same color background. So I'm gonna grab another one of my watercolor sheets. I'm gonna take my paper trimmer and we're gonna trim it down to two and a quarter inches. I just want a, a small panel for my card here. I'm going to bring in my craft mat and then using those same colors. Um, I'm kind of, there is, um, I will, she's going to be at an angle. So I want my colors to go at an angle. I'm going to start off doing a little swirl. The swirl I kind of went, um, went with the same angles as her ballerina shoe. Um, after I have my first color down, which is the make a move, we're going to turn around and add our orange our canoodle, blend those two together. And you know what, this is so neat because you don't have to be, it's not perfection. You can kind of go real organic with this, with the scribbles, just kind of filling it in. Now, after I have all four colors down, I'm gonna trail out that yellow on the right side and then trail out the pink on the left side. And then once I'm happy with it, I'm gonna use my heat gun and go ahead and dry that. Um, for our little girl, we're gonna fussy cut out just using some scissors. And basically, she's going to look like this on our card. But we need to stamp our sentiment. So I was trying to figure if I wanted to use Jump for Joy or the sentiment that says Make Life a Fairy Tale. And I think the Make Life a Fairy Tale will fit perfect in this bottom corner. So I brought in my Misty, and we're going to just go ahead, add our sentiment to that corner, and then we're going to ink it up. I chose my VersaFine Onyx Black ink to stamp the sentiment. This way it's nice and bold against that watercolor background. We'll just ink it up and stamp that. And I think our sentiment is good to go. I wanted to stamp a few more elements for my background. Kind of bring, spread out the color. So we're going to take that leftover sheet from our little girl. And I'm taking the dragonfly that's in the stamp set. I'm just going to pick that up and we're going to ink this little dragonfly up with our black licorice ink and I'm going to stamp it a few times on my watercolor cardstock and then I'm going to basically do the, I skipped the coloring on the little dragonfly here, um, but I fussy cut all three of my little dragonflies out and I, when I colored them in I made sure that they were um, different colors so that they weren't all the same. Now we're going to assemble our card, we're going to flip over our sentiment panel. I'm going to add some tape behind it, and then this is going to go in the lower portion of our card base, which is a standard A2 size card base. Just using the grid lines on my mat so I can get my panel straight. And I think that looks great. Next, I'm going to add foam adhesive behind my little girl. We're going to add her. Half of her is going to be above the sentiment panel, and then half of it is going to be on it. And I just love the way that looked. I think that looks so nice. We're going to add our little dragonflies, put one down by the sentiment and one more next to our little girl. A 
lovely okay we're gonna add a few little stars these are iridescent stars I thought that kind of went with the fairy tale kind of a theme we'll add some of those and then we're gonna bring in some sparkle so I'm gonna use my aqua shimmer pen um, at first I just went over lightly with the aqua shimmer pen and then I thought you know what? we're gonna add a lot like a fairy tale dusting so I'm gonna squeeze the barrel and get lots of that uh, shimmer out and go over her little dress too and also we'll add a little sparkle to our dragonflies so she has a trail of sparkle dust behind her <laughs> okay last but not least I'm going to use my journey glaze and we're going to fill in our dragonfly here all three of them and then that finishes off um, my project today guys using um, the fairy tale fox stamp set from Jane Davenport it's part of her whimsical and wild collection super fun and um everything that i use today will be linked below in case you guys are interested thanks for joining me have a lovely day we'll see you soon